How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through my team selection for the upcoming game week 7. So if you guys don't know by now, I am on the wildcard chip and therefore I'll be changing my entire team and showing you guys my second draft in this team selection. So if you guys haven't seen my wildcard draft from yesterday, go check it out, that's a Cole Palmer draft. But now I'm going to show you one without the Chelsea midfielder. Just provides better balance with the defence and the attack. And if you want draft that I am considering. Now the final wildcard draft will be finalised in the deadline stream coming up on Saturday. So make sure you guys have the notifications on for that one. But if you guys want to see the draft in this specific team selection, sit back, relax and let's get right into it. Now before we go over the actual game week 7 wildcard draft and team selection, I want to give a quick review of game week 6 and how it went. And we scored an overall 52 points. Now since my transfer plan video, the rank has dropped slightly to a grey arrow thanks to Semenya's heroics in that fixture. So yes, that's right, we dropped a few kind of thousand places, which isn't too great in the grand scheme of things. So that's what I'm going to classify it as a grey arrow. Now no rank on screen at the moment, as I've been mentioning throughout the kind of season, game week 10 is when the rank will appear. It's just too volatile at the moment. But let me know in the comments down below how your game week went. Was it a great week, a bad week or a terrible week? This is always a safe space for no matter what rank you guys are on. So let's see where those 52 points came from. Unfortunately on our bench, even though Howard Bellis was first with that goal against Bournemouth, he won't be coming off as our entire starting 11 did feature. So at least he did feature in that game as well as Winks who got a two-pointer, but I didn't need any of them. Now between the sticks we had Henderson back to his usual kind of theatrics. A one-pointer against a pretty poor Everton attack is not what you want to see. And definitely one of the players I'm looking forward to getting rid of on my wildcard. Now watch, in counter game week 7, he's going to keep a clinch against Liverpool and get bonus points. Which he has been doing against the better teams, to be fair. Now back 3 had hardly any points, Trent with 1, as well as Konza, both losing the clean sheet. Konza just conceded more goals than Trent did. Was a bit worried though about Trent because, kind of early into the fixture, he got a yellow card for time wasting. But at least there wasn't any kind of disciplinary problems late in the fixture. Then Pedro Porro was actually a player that ended up getting not one assist but actually a clean sheet plus a yellow card. The attacking returns have dried up from this Premier League season. So I was quite surprised, you know it's going to be a strange week if Pedro Porro keeps a clean sheet, as I suppose defence hasn't been great this season. Now Midford Apartment came in clutch, especially Mo Salah with the 10-pointer. Just regret not captaining him as I wanted to in the deadline stream. Just kind of didn't have the courage to go for Mo Salah over the popular Erling Haaland but that would have made this green arrow even sweeter. Now the biggest thing was him actually outperforming Saka in game week 6, as the majority of wildcarders dropped Mo Salah for Saka in their teams. Eze was quite disappointing, like Henderson, only a two-pointer against Everton, just dropped off with the consistency this Premier League season. At least Rodgers got his first goal for Aston Villa, taking him to 7 points, and then the newly transferred in Bumo for Jota got 9 points. So I was quite happy with the midfield apartment, only just wish Eze ended up scoring, as that would have made this game week even sweeter. Now up front, Erling Haaland blanked in the early kickoff, we should never back it. Not captaining Moisala was a big regret. But I guess how are we to predict that Erling Haaland would blank after this consistent start, that Newcastle team actually looked pretty strong against them. Ollie Watkins though came in clutch once again with an 11-pointer, quite a differential over the popular template. Just such a consistent option coming off last season, this season, he's continuing that form and the expected minutes are just getting better and better. Then finally, Jamie Vardy, we won the war but not kind of the battle. Arsenal still conceded with most people with a double up, but Jamie Vardy wasn't involved in any of the goals. I said this before the game week started, I just wanted Jamie Vardy to score and kind of wipe out that Arsenal clean sheet. At least the latter part actually happened though. But that Jamie Vardy one-pointer was made even worse because I was considering the minus 4 for someone like an Evan Nilsson and he racked up 9 points in the game against Southampton. So overall that would have looked quite sweet, we would have got a couple points gained, but not taking the minus 4 as well as the no Salah captaincy, this was the game week to kind of be courageous. Let me know if you guys were and how many points you guys scored in respect of game week 6, just kind of the great arrow for myself but at least it wasn't a massive red. Now before we go over the actual wildcard draft, I want to showcase what my team selection looked like before I activated the chip, and you guys can tell me if I should have actually done it. So I said this is my transfer plan, but I was actually regretting it a bit because the team still looked pretty strong. This was my starting 11 before any transfers. 
Now with one transfer and 0.4 in the bank, I probably would have taken Eze out for someone like a Trossard or a Martinelli. Let's see if that move would have come in clutch over someone like a Saka or Havertz. But as you guys can see, the team still look pretty respectable. I know I've got a triple up for Aston Villa against United, but I think they're going to do quite well in this fixture. Only downside then is going to be Henderson against Liverpool, but I guess he could rack up the saves. And I would have taken Eze out anyways for either an Arsenal asset or a Spurs one. So let's just hope that our wildcard team outperforms this one on screen right now. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same boat as the Game Week 6 wildcarders. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think I should have activated the chip or not? Some slight regret, but over the days with these kind of wildcard drafts I'm making, that regret is going away. So we've kind of hyped up this wildcard draft, so let's get straight into it. As mentioned, this draft is without Cole Palmer. I know it might be a massive kind of talking point, but the team looks pretty solid. Now there is quite a big debate about should you guys go from or not on the wildcard. I feel a little bit obliged to actually do it, as most people with their free transfers won't be able to get the Chelsea midfielder. The only hindrance with Cole Palmer is those Chelsea fixtures don't look that great, but they do improve in the kind of medium term. He is quite expensive and therefore, if I do downgrade into a cheaper option, I can upgrade other departments. But is it worth actually doing that downgrade as he is a great F4 asset? Quite a big factor is that he won't be playing kind of the European group stages at the moment. He wasn't included in the Chelsea squad and therefore he's guaranteed to play the Premier League fixtures. He is such a good F4 asset as well on set pieces, penalties and is super attacking and has that selfish streak that you need in an F4 asset. But keep an open mind as we go through the team and let me know your thoughts at the end of it. Now in terms of this draft, I had 0.0, .0 in the bank and therefore, if you guys have a team value less than me, you won't be able to afford this. But you can downgrade the bench slightly. For example, you can take out Valio at 4.8 and take him to a 4.5. That should save you about 0.3. But I like the extra added bonus because he is playing at the moment. He's almost out of position as a second striker in that Brentford squad and should be nailed for the near future as Visa's out injured. I've also got for Mikolenko at 4.3 million from Everton with their good fixtures coming up and I need some bench defensive coverage. Then finally Greaves as the probably best 4.0 at the moment for Ipswich but probably won't keep many clean sheets. Could always swap him out for Howard Bellis who just scored on Monday evening. Not much between them but Greaves might be more nailed. But this bench is pretty cheap and therefore the starting 11 has the maximum amount of value but as mentioned if you guys can't afford this team you can downgrade the bench even more. Now between the sticks is going to be quite controversial. I've actually gone for Edison from Man City just for a nailed Man City defender. Now I know this might be absolutely mad. He's not the best F4 asset. But as mentioned, I wanted some Man City coverage from a defensive point of view. You guys can always change this if you need some value and go to someone like a Flecken at 4.5. And the reason I didn't go for Ray is I've really gone for an Arsenal triple up. So I'm going to go over the back three and this might make more sense to you. And the kind of reason I'm going for Edison is because I've gone for Trent in the back department. Even though the fixtures are quite tough, this is Trent Alexander-Arnold. That Crystal Palace game might be the last good fixture for the medium term, but Trent can do it against anyone. Now next up is going to be pretty nailed Gabriel. He's been in kind of every draft I've made. You need some Arsenal defensive coverage, as the next two are so good. After that, you might want to downgrade them if you want to, but that Arsenal defense is kind of fixture proof. And that's why I've got no problem selecting Gabriel. Also offers that massive attacking threat going forward, and that's why I do prefer him over Saliba. And we've seen that actually this Premier League season. Now the last defender I'll be going for is going to be Rico Lewis from Man City. Now you guys can understand why I went for kind of Edison between the sticks. So no Guardiola on this draft for the double up and therefore Edison offers an alternative route as that Man City fixture run is simply too good to ignore. Now Rico Lewis might not be the most nailed option in the world but when he does play he's going to be great. Almost playing out of position at the moment. So save yourself some funds even though he might not be the most nailed option 4.7 is pretty good. Fingers crossed he starts most fixtures though. Now you guys kind of understand why I went for Mikolenko in the defensive department. I need some bench coverage if Lewis doesn't start. So this back four does look pretty powerful. Yes, there's kind of no Arsenal double up, but I believe the attack might be better value. And I've gone for the double up in the Man City defense. I guess the big change you might make is downgrade Trent to someone like a Guardiola and go for a cheaper goalkeeper. And then upgrade your midfield apartment, but I couldn't see anyone that I wanted at a more expensive price tag. So let's showcase that midfield apartment and where we could maybe upgrade an area if you guys want to. Definitely not on the first player and that's Saka. So I believe that Southampton fixture has to be targeted and therefore Saka has been in most of my drafts. And even against the better teams he might be quite fixture proof. 
So I do prefer him at the moment to someone like a Cole Palmer because of these next two fixtures. Then after that, we can downgrade him or upgrade him. So nothing much more needs to be said about Saka as well as the next option, and that's Mbumo. These two players are no-brainers in my opinion. Mbumo at the cheaper price tag is great value and a real talisman at the moment. Brentford's fixture is also looking pretty good and you guys can always double up with Carvalho in the starting 11. I'll talk about that shortly. But these two options, as I said, are pretty nailed. I can't see myself going without them. And now as we go for some variations. So in this draft, I've gone for Johnson from Spurs in the midfoot apartment. Do prefer him slightly to a Kulisevsky. If you guys don't know, he's had some of the high shots in the box over the Prem games. And at his cheaper price tag, might be an absolute steal. This might be one of those slots though if you want to downgrade Trent to a Guardiol and an Edison to a Flecken. You can go for a more expensive option, but at this price point, there's probably only Bruno Fernandes. Nothing much more needs to be said about that kind of upgrade. I probably won't do it. I'm going to take advantage of the Spurs' lovely fixtures. Now, as mentioned, between him and someone like a Kulisevsky, there's not much between them. Madison's also a great shot, but I do prefer the kind of more forward attackers. In the last midfielder slot, we needed to save some money and therefore Rodgers comes in from Aston Villa. Just great value at this price point. Don't think that you guys can go for many other players at 5.1 million, but some slight concern might be going for him as well as Carvalho as they're both quite cheap. Should be nailed, but just watch out for Aston Villa taking on kind of Bayern Munich tonight. He had some injury kind of scares but was training this week. Just make sure that he is okay to start. And Aston Villa fixtures might be a little bit of a mixed bag, but they are a pretty strong attack because he comes in quite cheap, doesn't have to return every single game week. But he's also kind of a mainstay, seen him in kind of many wildcard drafts and in most people's teams, just as still at this price point. Now the four department, you guys might have picked who the front three is going to be. The first option, no-brainer, Erling Haaland, with a Kamsi armband against Fulham. Just can't see myself going without the Norwegian, being super consistent, even though he blanked last game week. Nothing much more needs to be said about him though, he's a great asset, even better with these Lodium Man City fixtures. Then the next asset is going to be Dom Solanke from Spurs. I really like him in the slot. And Brighton's defense has had some injuries apparently. So great fixtures on the horizon and Spurs are putting up good attacking numbers. What's not to love? Also added to this, without Son, Solanke might be on penalties, which makes him even better of an option. But I was quite happy to include Solanke as well as Havertz in this forward line. But I think both assets can do really well in the short term. So yes, our Arsenal triple up is going to be kind of Gabriel, Saka as well as Havertz. Just feel like the Southampton game has to be targeted from an attacking point of view. So I do like this combination of the forwards. The only downside is not going for Cole Palmer. But I think the overall team structure looks pretty decent. You guys can let me know though. Do you think this draft or my last draft was better? I think it might be quite close between them. I do like the focus on attack in this one though. With those type of fixtures, Cole Palmer might not be as great as he was in game week 6. I don't want to points chase too much. I will probably be giving an update though in a Friday video or at least in my kind of deadline stream, so make sure your notifications are on for that one. If you guys are on the wildcard draft, let me know what your draft is looking like at the current moment. I might get some inspiration from you guys. Otherwise, join my Discord server or follow me over on Twitter. Links in the description. But this is basically going to wrap up for you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you didn't subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Tons of content still to come ultimate guide tomorrow and deadline stream so make sure those bar notifications are turned on but for the time being i'm sayo it's been davy fpl and i'm out cheers bye